everybody, and welcome back to Digital Integrated Circuits. I'm Professor Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at Bar Ilan University, and we'll now be going over the Kahoot for Lecture 3, the last part, which is called Leakage. This short Kahoot will only have four questions. The first one is, which of the following suffers from subthreshold leakage in a CMOS inverter with Vn equals VDD? So this is our inverter over here. We have the input A and the output Q, and we have a PMOS pull up and an NMOS pull down. And which of the two is leaking when we have Vn equals VDD? Is it the NMOS, the PMOS, both transistors or neither transistor? And I'm actually gonna guess that it's the PMOS. Let's see why this is. This is something that always confused me when I just started um, learning this stuff. Um, we have the two states kind of of the inverter over here. In the first one, we have a zero at the input, and then the PMOS is on, and the NMOS pull down is off. In the second state, we have um, one or VDD at the input, and in that case, the PMOS is off and the NMOS is on. And what I'm saying is that the transistor that is supposed to be off, in other words, the PMOS in this case, or the NMOS in this case, they're the ones that are leaky. Well, that's kind of counterintuitive because um, you would say that, you know, this guy is on, so um, current would be going through him, and this guy is on, so current be, would be going through him. But the thing is that current will go through them as long as if you have any type of, uh, uh, if you have any type of voltage swing over here and the, re and the reason that there isn't is because the other one is off so any uh, leakage is going through here and it becomes current that goes through here let me try to explain that so here we have the VGS versus IDS curve and you see that this uh, curve is um, you know uh, built like this and if we look at for example the bottom the bottom uh, uh, state over here we have a VGS which is equal to VDD so if we look at this graph we're way over here at VDD and there we have a very high IDS. So you would say that there has to be a lot, lot, lot of current going through here. So why isn't there current going over there? Well, remember that we also have another graph that goes with this. In fact, this is kind of a, a three-dimensional graph, but we only can really look at two dimensions. So that's why we just look at VGS versus IDS. When we have VDS, which is a, you know, as important as VGS in this case versus uh, the ID. Okay, and um, if we take the graph for VDS over IDS that is uh, appropriate for the VGS that we have over here, VGS equals VDD, we get you know a nice big graph, something like that. And you see again here, there's a lot of current. So why isn't there current through this NMOS that has a channel and that is on? It's because VDS is actually zero. So the output over here is zero. Then we get the VDS equals zero, uh, VDS equals zero, VDS equals zero is over here on the graph where ID equals zero. Um, and that's why we don't have any leakage, but uh, we, why we don't have any current through here. The minute that there will be some current, so any, any current that goes through here and leaks and brings this up to some sort of delta, it will move this graph over to here. We're now over here at delta, and all of a sudden we have plenty of current that pulls just directly and discharges that again. So actually that is on current, it's not leakage. The leakage is what can go through here and cause this small, you know, uh, change in voltage, and that will immediately be swept through the on transistor. So when we look at leakage, we always look at these off transistors. So the, or at least uh, when I'm talking about subthreshold leakage or any leakage that goes from, you know, uh, the uh, the drain, uh, the the source to the drain or the drain to the uh, the source to the drain. Okay, any um, any leakage is uh, is through the off transistor. So back to our Kahoot. The answer is the PMOS, as we saw over there. Our second question. Which of the following leakages is not affected by the gate voltage? And is it subthreshold leakage, gate leakage, diode leakage, or jittle? Which one is not affected by the gate voltage? And the answer, of course, is going to be diode leakage. We use that question to just go and overview the different leakages we have in our uh, transistor. So the main leakage that we discuss is subthreshold leakage. Okay, subthreshold leakage is leakage from the drain to the source. That's the same direction that our current really flows. And we can see that subthreshold leakage is proportional to, um, a, a, to VGS in the X minute, actually VGS minus VT. So um, it has a, uh, a, an exponential dependence on two parameters, on VGS, which is, of course, you know, the difference 
VGS, and a VT, which is a property of the transistor. And so any change in, in VGS or in VT will cause an exponential change in the subthreshold leakage when we're at, um, you know, when, we're, when VGS is smaller than VT. Okay, so of course that has a dependence on the gate voltage, which was a question in the code. Um, Dibble is kind of a complement, it's not complementary, it's a, in addition to subthreshold leakage, it depends how you look at it. It could be um, uh, in one way saying that, um, that drain um, voltage takes down the VT of the transistor and therefore it exponentially causes a threshold leakage to rise. It could also be considered a different type of a leakage, but if, as we can remember, Dibble drain induced barrier lowering means that because we put some sort of a voltage over here, um, what we're doing is we're causing, you know, the, uh, the potential barrier over here to go lower and not be able to really close a short channel transistor enough. There are all kinds of ways to look at this. Maybe it makes the, the, uh, the depletion region bigger and so your um, channel gets smaller. There are different ways to kind of look at this type of thing depending on how it's most intuitive for you and you want to understand it. But in the end, it's, um, uh, it is exponentially dependent on VDS. And I didn't ask it in the question because the question is, is it dependent on, on gate voltage? And the answer is no, but it is maybe a part of subthreshold leakage, which is dependent on gate voltage. So I, pur I purposely didn't ask it about Dibble in the Kahoot. Gate leakage, of course, is the leakage that goes through, you know, the, the gate dielectric, and that is something that is not in the, the direction that we actually are um, running our, our on current. It's something that goes against uh, the transistor's kind of uh, uh, purpose. And this is obviously uh, 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 dependent on the uh, gate to channel um, voltage swing, and so it is dependent on the gate voltage. Um, of course, it's also dependent on the thickness of the oxide, which causes the potential barrier to be, you know, really strong or kind of weaker. Okay, and um, the final one that we have over here is jittle, and jittle is actually because of the swing between the drain and the gate. So the gate, um, when it's off usually, and if uh, the drain is, is on, we're going to have some sort of a VDG. Here. And if we have that, we're going to cause band-to-band -band tunneling and other things that are going to cause um, leakage that goes from the drain into the uh, substrate. And that is, again, not the direction that usually the transistor is conducting current, but some sort of a, a leakage. And obviously, because of the G over here, it's dependent on, uh, on the gate, as we asked before. I just also want to show you that if we usually take um, the VGS to um, IDS type of a graph, um, and let's say we'll do log IDS because uh, it's often better to look at the threshold. We have this, you know, area of the subthreshold swing. This is where we get this exponential dependence on VGS. And it never goes down to zero because this is a, a log. Um, but actually, if we start taking a negative VGS, what happens is you would think that this would continue down. But at some point, it starts going up again. And this is really due to jittle. Okay, so um, those are the, the main leakages, and of course we have reverse uh, bias diode leakage, so any diode, you know, it has this type of a uh, uh, VD to um, ID over here, ID, and uh, usually it's over here, but if we go uh, backwards, we have some sort of a non-zero um, type of a current on the reverse bias, and that's the diode leakage, but it also, it's not dependent on the gate voltage, it's only dependent really on the voltage we have on the source in the drain. So going back to our Kahoot again, um, subthreshold leakage is obviously dependent on the gate voltage. It's exponentially dependent on VGS. Um, gate leakage is obviously dependent on the gate voltage. It's from the gate to the channel voltage drop, and it's also pretty much an exponential. And jittle is dependent on the, the gate to drain voltage. Um, diode leakage, on the other hand, is not dependent on gate voltage. Our third question is, what is the minimum VT of a transistor with an optimal subthreshold slope for I on um, divided by I off is bigger than 10 to the third? So is it 60 millivolts? Is it 100 millivolts? Is it 180 millivolts? Or is it 235 millivolts? Well, optimal subthreshold slope is 60 millivolt. If we want to have an ion to IOF ratio of over 10 to the third, it's three times 60, which is 180 millivolts. Again, let's go and explain this one. So just to remind you about subthreshold leakage, um, there are different ways of looking at subthreshold leakage. What is for sure is that it's dependent on VGS minus VT, so it's exponentially um, uh, dependent both on VGS 
and on VT. And actually, the way we another way we tend to look at this a lot is this uh, uh, capacitive voltage divider. So we have the gate voltage over here, and we have the surface potential or the surface voltage or the channel voltage, you know, over here. And um, what a transistor is supposed to do is you're supposed to put some sort of a, uh, a voltage on the gate. That's your control kind of a, a, a electric. Road, you're supposed to control what's over here and it's supposed to uh, have some sort of transfer function that's going to control the surface potential and uh, um, optimally really this would be a complete you know one-to-one -one type of thing whatever we would do here would cause a direct uh, change on the channel on the surface uh, voltage however what happens is we have these um, other parasitic I would call them capacitances which uh, we can call them C depletion but it's like for example the capacitance to the bulk capacitance the drain capacitance to the source and all kinds of other um, types of parasitic capacitances over here and they're trying to keep the surface uh, potential at the same voltage or pull against it and therefore we don't have this perfect kind of um, uh, control over the uh, the channel voltage and that is what causes um, uh, our lack of uh, perfect control over here and we can um, show that the the change of the surface uh, potential due to changes in the gate voltage which we want to be perfect you know it's actually not it's uh, it depends on the voltage the uh, capacitive divider between the c aux and the c depletion so it bec and we call that n so that's uh, 1 over n is the the change over here and if uh, we were in a perfect world this would not exist and and n would be um, equal to 1 okay so um, uh, that brings us in with a, just a change of kind of parameters. We get this S, which is the subthreshold swing coefficient. It's N times the third surface potential Phi T um, times land of 10, and it's going to be uh, larger than 60 millivolts. And it, it comes actually in 60 millivolts per decade. So uh, millivolts per decade. And why we show this is because, again, we have that same VGS to IDS graph that we showed uh, previously and with a log scale. So this is a logarithmic change. In other words, we're going up here by decades. This is going to go 10 uh, to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, etc. And those are decades. And, we're, and here we're going, obviously, in volts. So we're asking how many millivolts we actually have to go below VT in order to go um, a decade lower. So that's what millivolts per decade means. And in a perfect world, we have to make a change of 60 millivolts to get a one uh, decade change in, in current. Okay, and in the question that I asked, it was how many, how many millivolts do we have to change? What is the difference between VT and zero? Because um, I off is VGS over zero and I on is when VGS equals VT and above it. Okay, so when we go from, uh, um, from VT down to zero, we want to have an I on to I off ratio of 10 to the third or 1,000. That means we want to change by three decades. Okay, so um, what, is the, uh, what is the VT that we need? And if we're in a perfect world, we have 60 millivolts per decade. So we need to move 60, you know, three times 60 millivolts. Then uh, we need a VT of at least 180 millivolts in order to change our, um, our I on to I off by, uh, by three decades. Okay, or to get a 1,000 ratio between our on current and our off current. However, uh, unfortunately, most planar transistors are actually closer to 100 millivolts per decade. So our minimum VT for a, a 10 to the third ratio would be actually at 300 millivolts. And in fact, maybe we want more than that, and we'll actually use higher um, higher ratios depending if it's a high voltage, a high uh, threshold voltage transistor, a low threshold voltage transistor, or a standard voltage transistor. And this is something that is really provided um, with your PDK, and it's designed for uh, each technology and so forth separately. Okay, and our final question for this Kahoot: What is the temperature of a slow corner under temperature inversion? So is it 0, volts, uh, zero degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, 125 degrees Celsius, or really it's kind of hard to know? Well, we're talking about temperature inversion, okay? And in temperature inversion, actually a slow corner is going to be at 0 degrees Celsius. The classic approach to temperature effect on delay says that the, um, the on current is dependent on the mobility. And mobility is, uh, is uh, inversely dependent on temperature. Why? Because if we have our channel, you know, we have our 
uh, source and our drain over here. And what we have is a whole bunch of atoms that are inside our lattice. And these atoms, they have some sort of energy which causes them, causes them motion and they move around. And the higher energy they have, the higher uh, movement they're going to make. And we want to take an electron, you know, and make it move from one side to the other. And we want it to have what we call ballistic kind of uh, uh, in other words, it just goes straight through. But because these atoms are moving around, then um, the electron will actually bounce off them. And the more it bounces, the longer the path is um, and the longer it takes to go. That's basically our mobility. If we had a ballistic path, the mobility would be constant. It would just uh, be dependent on the length between the source and the drain. But because we actually run into the different atoms uh, and also in the surface scattering and stuff as well, but mainly because we run into the different atoms, it takes us longer and the hotter we make our uh, our transistor, the more this movement is going to be and the more of a chance that we're going to have a longer path. So the higher the temperature, the lower the mobility. That's the classic kind of way to think about it. And therefore, what we used to always do is we would say for a slow corner, we're going to take a high temperature. So for example, 125 degrees. However, something happens um, uh, that is in opposite effect. VT actually is inversely dependent on temperature. So if you look at the different D VT type of equations, you'll see that they, the higher the temperature, the lower the VT is. Okay, and we of course know that the, the, the delay, you know, or the 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 the, um, the current through the transistor is uh, dependent on VGS minus VT. So the lower VT goes, you know, the faster our gate goes, or the lower our uh, the TPD goes. Okay, so that's exactly the opposite effect to here. And this really depends on what is a stronger effect, the mobility or the VT, which one is, is stronger. And at some point there is a, you know, there is a turning point where VT becomes the more dominant uh, um, factor. And that is the point that we call temperature inversion. And it happens about one volt of VD, uh, VDD. So VDD comes around one volt, and that's been kind of the point uh, for the last uh, several technology generations. That's where really we change from having um, te uh, uh, high temperature make our, our gates go slower to having low temperature, or having high temperature makes our gates go faster. And therefore, that is a point of temperature inversion, and we have to change our corner from being, um, you know, our slow corner being at 125 degrees, we take our slow corner at zero degrees. Now, in, in practice, because we are actually operating close to the temperature inversion point, what we'll usually do is, is we'll at least at hold, we'll check at both, um, you know, the high and the low temperature and probably set up as well. So we're going to be really um, using both of the temperatures, the high and the low, just to be on the safe side. Leakage, on the other hand, will always check at the high temperature because leakage is not really dependent on on mobility it's mainly dependent on VT so a high leakage corner will always have a high temperature um, that was the end of the Kahoot the short Kahoot about leakages and if you have any questions please feel free to ask me on my channel